Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Kel Brook is back. Devastating victory. Second round KO of Sergei Rabchenko in his 154 pound debut. Forgot we won the WBC silver title yeah, as well. A little bit of bling. That. A little bit of bling as well to take back. And um, very, very happy camp tonight. Moving on, onwards and upwards. Great to get a win. Over to you guys. Now, what did you make of the performance uh, tonight? You know, I felt good. You know, once I, once I got settled, uh, the timing come, the uppercut set everything up. And, uh, you know, we just finished, finished the fight, but I felt good in there. I felt strong. The, the heavier weight. Um, you know, obviously I've been out, and you know it's a good. It's good to get the tick. You know, the first tick back, and just get settled, and then the timing comes. So it was just a matter of time tonight. Did you feel a bit special as well to come back here to be in Sheffield again to experience that, and then to see what you did? Yeah, you know when the when the music come on, the goose bumps were there. And, uh, different starts to the song. I thought they played start. the wrong song. I didn't no. even know about that. No, that's like Greg, the, oh, no. Greg Marriott weaving his magic. Greg Marriott to do his uh, DJ Greg. Yeah. DJ. But yeah, I just I felt amazing today. Back to winning ways and the weights are, you know, a big thing. You know, imagine taking another seven pound off me. I, you see me on the scales yesterday, and you know, I just felt a lot healthier. And you know, when you're getting older, it takes it out of your legs and takes it out of your body. It's it's like, it's like taking. You know, weight off a stone, there's, there's nothing to take, take off me, so... How much are you in a good place? I'm in a great place. My life's very good. And, you know, you've heard it here, I'm going to be back in the gym. You know, I'm not going to know missing list, I'm going to be back to active. We've got new kids in the gym, Billy Joe and Jason Quigley, everyone's got fights, everyone's behind each other. The bar's been risen with Billy Joe in, in Canada, you know, so we're all, it's held a competition, we're all competing against each other and you know the, the gym's bu buzzing again. It's not good on a bike though is it? It's not good on a bike but, not good on a bike. but yeah you know, the gym's buzzing I'm looking forward to this year we might ease the money of Khan's wheels so you know I need them exciting fights I keep saying and uh, you know 154 though I'm putting the champion on notice you know I'm, I'm here I felt good tonight so anyone getting it with them it's game over. Eddie, what could be next if Khan's a bit further down the line? What could be in store for Kel? Well, I think um, it was about Kel winning tonight. Amir's fighting on April 21st. The plan is always for those guys to fight again in the summer. Um, that fight, I think, potentially happens in November, December. There is Kel could be out on early June at the earliest, but certainly before the end of the summer. Um, you know, I want to see him step up and have a, a nice step up again from Rabchenko, who, you know, people talk about you know who don't know their boxing Rabchenko's number five in the WBC he's got two defeats in his career both at a very very high level he's very tough he's had 12 weeks notice he's trained very hard you saw him in the in the ring tonight before the bell went he was he was, he was staring, staring down Kel Brook and I've got to tell you my bum was going <laughs> so um, he was up for it and he couldn't handle the power and I don't believe anyone can you speak to anyone who spars with Kel Brook when he's 11-6 11-7 Everybody, super middleweight's talking about the strength and power of Kel Brook. And I just believe at welterweight, you, you couldn't see it. And tonight you saw him take out a big light middleweight who was really up for it. And, and it showed that you know, Rabchenko's world level, but he's not elite level. But what Kel done to him just shows him that he is 100% elite level. Um, and really the key, my job for Kel Brook is, one, to keep him motivated, which will in turn keep him happy. And three, provide him the biggest fights possible. He didn't get the best out of what he could have at welterweight. But he also hasn't had the best out of his career that he should have done, bearing in mind his talent. So we've got to get it, because otherwise we'll regret it. And what tonight showed is there's so much more to come. If he would have come in tonight and his timing was off and he was taking shots. and But it wasn't. It was like one of the best performances that I've seen from Kell Brook tonight. What do you think Amir Khan would have made of... Well, I think that you know, he, I think I think Amir knows how good Kell Brook is. Kell Brook's answered the questions. He's had two defeats, two injuries, and he come back with a performance like that. Amir Khan got knocked out two years ago. He's had two years out of the ring, and he returns on April twenty-first. 
So we've got to see how he looks. I'm hoping he looks great. I mean, Kel was hoping he looks great because the fight becomes bigger and bigger. Um, but, you know, I'm sure Amir was watching tonight. Kel will be in Liverpool for the, for the calm fight. But it remains, you know, my job for both guys is to provide the biggest fights out there. And I feel like that fight is the biggest fight out there for both of them. And I just feel that one day, if we don't make that fight, we'll look back and think, oh, everyone will. You know? and, um, but the fight's not as big if they're not firing on all cylinders. So Kel's shown he's 100% firing on all cylinders. Amir's got a show date on April 21st, and then we move on. But my ultimate uh, mindset at the moment is get another date for Kel Brook. Because I think this is one of the first times where he says, I'm straight back in the gym, that I actually believe in. He also wants to be a two-way world champion. What's the pathway like to achieve that? Yeah, we want to be two-way world champion, but also we want to be in the, the big fights. And if they don't materialise in terms of world championship fights, then we have to look at other fights. But you've got Saddam Ali, he's a WBO champion. Looks like he could be fighting Liam Smith. You've got Charlo, WBC champion, he's a good fighter. And you've got Lara, who's unifying against Hurd. So it's a very, very difficult division. But I've always believed Kel Brook can beat all those guys. And he beat Errol Spence at 154 pounds, no question. The only reason he couldn't beat Errol Spence is because of what he had to do to make 147 pounds. And now people make out that Errol Spence is the second coming of Sugar Ray Leonard. He's not. Kel's better fighter than Errol Spence. Errol Spence is a very good fighter, but at welterweight, he can't do it. You know, he feels as though he can make welterweight, but honestly, this is, I, I truly believe this is the way. And, you know, the problems might come in the Khan fight where... He wants it at 147. Khan's next fight's at 150. So we'll have to see how it ends up. But that's a decision for Kel and Dom. My decision to put the, the deals in front of them. But I just feel that 154 is going to be very difficult to beat. Dom, go I think, you know, getting back to the... Just getting back to where... Uh, but I'm still thinking about it. You know, the thing... The difference I noticed tonight when Kel was warming up, he just got the energy and the power... Where when he's make, when he makes one four seven with the IBF, you can only put ten pounds until nine o'clock the next morning, and that's a you know a massive thing in your mind. You can't eat too much at night time. You don't sleep well. There's all these things, but tonight he could just tell because he didn't have that you know restriction. Um, he, you know he, he comes in at his normal fight weight. You know he probably just came in under I think what be tonight eleven twelve. Yeah, about 11, 12, which is what he used to get back to at welterweight. But, you know, you've got a, a more even time frame to do it in. You're not, you're not, you know, restricting yourself in the morning. You've got to eat it the rest of the day. And you could tell he just got the energy in the changing room where after a couple of shots, he's blowing a little bit and he can see him thinking, I'm going to have the energy to get through this fight. But today, it was flowing. I was saying to everybody, he's punching hard. Everybody's a bit concerned. Is he still punching as hard? But, you know, you could tell he just got the energy about him. He'd have a blast. And, you know, the only time really I'd seen him like that, you know, was when he actually boxed. Uh, Sean Porter in America because he'd been such a, through a long camp. He'd had a he'd had a good training camp for a long, long time, and he he came down his weight gradually, and you know everything was perfect. And tonight, you know, you could just feel the power in him. And I, I didn't actually expect. I said, you know, this is going to be maybe an eight or nine round job for you, Kel. Give him two or three rounds, get your adjustments, and then, and then start looking for the shots. But he, I, I says, unless you see that opening, and I said to him, you know, uh, the uppercuts are going to work with this kid because he'd obviously sparred this guy. Then you know, Kel wasn't 100% fit, he wasn't 100% fit, but the shots seemed to be working. You know, Ravchenko's got a tight guard and he's, he's got a long reach, but Kel just managed to sneak inside with that uppercut, boom, clipped him. And you know, Kel, you could see the power coming through all the way through the warm up in the changing room. He looked good, uh, good performance. He's only lost twice, Ravchenko. People were saying, you know, it's probably you know, a, a bit of a tough fight for a comeback, but you need that. Tough fight as a comeback, you know. You can't. You've got to have a bit of fear in you. And the way he's trained, being away over Christmas, New Year on training camp, you can see the competitive edge. You know, you, you see fighters when they, they're coming to the end of their career. Like you can see Eddie looking, and thinking, "How's oh, he going to come out? He's going to get clipped and be shying away from shots." But he didn't. And you know, if you see the competitive edge, we kill book bike riding, swimming, running, sparring, and you watch him in training. When you're losing it, you don't have that. You're like, "I can do that another day." But Kelbro doesn't do it another day, he does it on that day. He puts everything in. So, you know, tonight, he's put the time in over Christmas, the new year, and tonight it's come to fruition. Kelly, you said you've been in a dark place not so long ago, I think you said Christmas after five. Just how much better off are you now than like, uh, uh, different. What's, what's the big difference between the two? The style for living and being around good people and letting endorphins off training and eating well, drinking well, and just being around positive people. You know, and you, you see, you see it, you see it every day. You get, you get an improvement every day. So, 
I don't ever want to go down to them dark places again. And the spends took me to them dark places. So we're back to winning ways. You know, you, you learn a lot about yourself. And uh, I feel good, I feel great. Kel, what do you think the big difference is for you between welterweight and super welterweight? Seven pounds. <laughs> yeah. You are massive better than ours. Exactly, that, it is that. And them seven pound, uh, you, I, don't, I don't need to take them off. And uh, you saw me in there. You saw the pictures which we looked at yeah. yesterday from the Spence weighing oh, to the I weighing like yesterday. A drowned rat. Yeah, that, it's just. Down, down. What does that extra seven pounds give you as a boxer? It's, it's mental aid to stay. It's, it's not taking it out of your body. It's not taking it out of your body. You know, when you're already lean as, as can be and then you've got to take another seven pound off. When you get to 30, 31, you can probably get away with it in your 20s, but, you know, it's, it's so much of a struggle. Yeah, it's there. Uh, and with a ten pound limit, you can't really, you know, get the get the stuff back in you need, get the get the fluid, get the get calories the and energy back in. So it's a big difference. And what do you think is possible for you now at this stage of your career in the next couple of years? I mean, for the stars, I think I can I can I'm gonna go out and win another world title. You know, see me perform like this every time. You got a message for Amir Khan? I've got no message for him, you know, just, just enjoy his training and win, make sure he get his, get his wins, you know, that's, that's how the fights with me, me and him are going to happen, we've both got to keep winning and, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to naturally come together. Okay, were you surprised you stopped him in the second round? No, no, because I, 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 I hit hard, tough sparring, you know, tough sparring but with small gloves on, like, you know, he actually said that himself in the press conference, with small gloves on, we had no head guard on and I'm more... I'm more on it in, in a fight than in sparring, you know, because I see all these young guys and they think they're, fight, they're sparring me, world champion, and they're like, that's their time, so they're putting it on me in sparring and I'm a bit more laid back. But when it comes to it, it you know, comes to it for real, you know, I'll come alive and, you know, I could see the shots, it was just a matter of time, I punched very hard and no one, no one at any weight can take them shots off me. You spoke um, in the build up about like, um, professional pride being a bit hurt after. People questioning you after the Spence loss. Do you feel like you've vindicated that a bit now? You know, everyone's still got their opinion, but you know, I know, you know, I know what what we're going off and stuff. So that that's the, that's all what counts for me. Yeah. Any more? All right. Thanks for coming, guys. Well done. Yeah.